Hey guys, so golf being a rotational sport, let's talk about common uh, misconceptions that people may have to train for golf and how to do it in a safe way. So, so Clance, um, what are some common mistakes you see golfers or other rotational athletes make when they're training for their respective sports? Well, I train a lot of baseball players and I train some, uh, some golfers as well. And one of the most common mistakes I see in these rotational sports such as baseball and golf is that they think they have to train rotational in terms of doing a lot of rotational med ball throws, wood chops and things like that, which is, is furthest from the fact or science. The biggest thing what I do with these athletes is build as much leg strength as possible build those limbs, the muscles that you as an instructor are going to teach the athlete, the golfer, to use and rotate properly. What happens is when a lot of these athletes are doing these excessive rotational work, they're actually messing up the motor patterns that you're trying to teach them properly. Then you have to go back and fix that. So that's one of the biggest mistakes. I actually just simply make sure their range of motion is adequate, increase their mobility, increase flexibility, and get them strong, safely. And one of the foundational exercises I like to use for that is squats, but proper squats, not half squats. And within that, we use that, the squats to work on mobility, flexibility, and so on and so forth. And another thing we like to do is use muscle snatch overhead squat to work on the range of motion, flexibility, and so on and so forth. So the biggest thing, the biggest mistake is training that rotational movement that you need in golf. And they're, they're weak. You need to get strong to hit the ball hard and to actually perform the right movements properly that you want your golfers to. So that's the biggest mistake I see. Right, so, so is, this, is it fair for me to say um, those, those rotational exercises may be okay, but it's not, it shouldn't be the majority of their training program. They should still make sure they're strong enough um, before they may sprinkle in some rotational exercises? A hundred percent. I like to say they're putting the cart before the horse. Totally. A lot of times they, they're working on this rotation where they're weak, right. they, have, they have no mobility. So the rotational exercises, are, they're not working at all. Right. So you're 100% right. Right, so, so get them stronger, get them mobile, so that when they're rotating, they're, they're working in, in this range rather than they would have started with just working in this range. Exactly, so you know, getting stronger is important, but you, you have to work hand in hand with mobility and flexibility. That has to be part and parcel together with building that strength. Because you just said it perfectly, if you get strong and you're strong within that short range of motion, then okay, you're gonna be strong with that short range of motion, but that also leaves this range of motion for injury and also lack of performance. And also building speed and velocity. As you know, you need like uh, for a swing, it's like, it's like a coil spring, totally. wind it up and you release. So those things are, are crucial in terms of building together systematically. Right, so is it, a, is it also fair for me to say, I think when I talk to average golfers, even other players who train in other sports, there's this thought in their head where they say, if I get stronger, I'm gonna be inflexible. They're probably just not training properly. They're probably training like bodybuilders. Right, because if you train properly as a high performance athlete, regardless whether it's golf, baseball, basketball, whatever it may be, you should not be sacrificing mobility for strength. You should be having both together at the same both time. Both together. That is not only mobility and flexibility and range of motion, but also speed and power, high velocity. That is key. You train slow, you're going to be slow, right? But it's done systematically, and that is the problem. So you can't try to do everything at once. You, you layer certain things. If you're weak, get strong. You don't have adequate range of motion or flexibility. Work on that. A lot of people don't understand you can utilize weights properly to work on full range of motion, mobility done properly with basic exercises. That is the key. And the problem I have is with, say, for instance, a lot of bodybuilding exercises. Um, not, I love bodybuilding, not against bodybuilding at all, but what happens is they take those bodybuilding movements for bodybuilders because their job is to look good on the stage. The golfer's job is to perform, you know, be as accurate with that ball as possible. So they actually are, are training the wrong, uh, how can I say, the, the neurologically, they're, they're messing up their motor patterns by putting on what I call dumb muscle. I see. Right? So you need to put on smart muscle, which is very important. That's cool. So I love that you say, say that you want to neurologically move properly to perform. So is it fair to say when, when you're training um, to perform and getting your muscles to, to try to uh, recruit that high power, high speed, do you have to 
let's say using a squat as an example, do you have to push on that squat as you're pushing up at full conviction of full effort or is there a place for doing it at let's say half effort? Well, okay, your, your question is if you want to recruit higher threshold motor units, which is conducive to explosiveness, speed, power, and strength, yes, you have to work as high velocity or the intent has to be explosive. The intent has to be speed. But you have to be ready for that because technique is paramount. So what I do not like is when athletes are training with high speed and their technique is horrible. A, you're increasing the risk for injury. B, if your range of motion is horrible, you're just training that range of motion at high velocity and you're negating the rest, rest of the full range of motion, which mostly happens is these athletes just train muscularly, but we have ligaments, tendons, and fascia, which have to be incorporated. So what I do is remap a lot of these athletes to use their whole structure neurologically to perform properly. Because you may see it yourself. You see some big, strong jack guys or golfers, but they're not moving properly. They're, they're uncoordinated and so on. So you may see a slim golfer, but they, they hit the ball hard and fast. And neuro So it's training neurologically, which is super important. That is key. And you know, you put on size as you need. So I guess it's simple to say is muscles or big muscles doesn't equate to strength if you're training properly. I can have tons of athletes or golf that look small, but they're strong, super strong. So that is the key. I love that, I love that. So with that, we're gonna see you in the next video when we start going to structural balance to set us up for phase one, two, three, to incorporate Clance's trainings to help you guys be a better golfer, a better athlete, just a better healthy lifestyle in general. And we'll see you there.